your hand and hold me still I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully Hi, this is Bill Reichert, National Director with Campus and Community Ministries here at CMDA. Thank you for joining with us for our weekly devotional and prayer time, a time that we get together as part of CMDA community to hear from God's Word and to, and to take a time, a strategic pause during our day to hear from God. So thank you for joining us and being a part of this time together. Uh, we have, of course, moved our time to a different Facebook Live platform. We're uh, no longer at the Courage in the Crisis uh, Facebook group, but now we're on our national site. So I would invite you to encourage others to join us, to come, to be a part of this time together, to like the page, the CMDA National Facebook page, and there they'll be able to see these live streams in the future. Today we have a very special uh, uh, opportunity to hear from one of our medical students, uh, Zach Mead, who is a uh, medical student at Carl Illinois uh, College of Medicine. And it's a very uh, unique program they have there, Carl. And if you haven't had a chance to hear more about Carl and uh, Zach, uh, he was on the CMDA Matters podcast with myself and Dr. Mike Chupp uh, a couple weeks ago, and you can look for that in your uh, podcast player and listen to that interview. But um, uh, Zach is uh, not only a medical student there, but uh, he's been a leader in his local ministry and has recently been invited to be part of the trustees as our newest member of uh, the CMDA student trustee, and he'll be starting that uh, come this fall. So very excited to have uh, Zach in that role as well. So I'm going to uh, allow you to hear from Zach in just a minute, but as always, I'd like to remind you that we do ask you to put your prayer requests down below in the comments section. Uh, we take those with us, we pray for you, and so those are important to us. So do communicate those prayer requests down below. And uh, we're going to hear from Zach, and then I'll circle back with some closing remarks and a prayer. Hi, my name is Zachary Mead, and I'm the student representative on the National Board of Trustees. And what that role means is I'm seeking and, and desiring input from all of the students from the East Coast to the West Coast um, to represent the CMDA chapter's needs from a student perspective at the national meetings. Um, and I'd love to seek out your opinions. I'm going to do that through Zoom meetings and reaching out to chapters and stuff. And feel free to reach out to me uh, in, via email at any time. So I wanted to take a second to introduce myself and my testimony as well. So I was born in Indiana. My family suffered from, you know, substance use disorders and violence. My mother was in a pretty abusive relationship. But... You know, she was able to get out of that eventually. Uh, my parents got a divorce and, and we kind of had a fresh start in Florida. Unfortunately though, my mother found herself kind of deeper in the grips of addiction. So throughout my childhood, I did suffer kind of going through um, times in foster care and living with other people, um, watching my mother and my parents suffer. Uh, it, it was difficult, but eventually the Lord found me um, my mother went to jail, and instead of going to foster care again, I had the opportunity to go live with my grandparents. So it was during this time in my life that was the most stable time I'd ever had. My grandmother showed me what a stable you know, family environment looked like, what a family should act like, um, and she showed me the faith of Jesus Christ. She shared the gospel with me. She invited me to church. And I found myself 
before that, slipping into the same cycle my parents were in. Uh, hanging out with the wrong friends, doing the wrong things on the weekends, things that I wasn't proud of. But my grandmother, you know, she showed me the right way. And that, in those years, those last years of my high school career, I, I found Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was baptized um, and I received my calling from him. And that was to serve in the military. Uh, my goal was to save lives, you know, kind of in a physical way, but still serve him and his kingdom in a spiritual way. So that led me to serve active duty military. Um, I did that for a little over four years, and then I was married in between that time uh, to a beautiful woman. We just had our first child, um, but along in between there and then, now and then, I went to went to college at Nebraska. I got my degree in engineering, and I thought my next calling was to serve. Uh, you know, veterans through, you know, innovation and creation, but I started doing EMT work and volunteer firefighter work, and I loved that healthcare aspect of things. So I decided that I wanted to do both. I wanted to be an engineer and a healthcare provider, and lo and behold, when it came time to apply for medical school, uh, this new school had just opened up, Carl Illinois College of Medicine at the University of Illinois, and their main goal was to combine medicine with engineering and to create physician innovators that could not only provide great care for patients, but could think and create, a, create new ways to help them. So it was really like God opened the door for me. He showed me and he gave me my calling and then he showed me the path to achieve that. So that brings me here today, uh, working with CMDA and hopefully representing the student's interests as best as I can. So the study, the devotional that I wanna get into is going to be Philippians. We're going to focus on Philippians chapter 4. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this was all the uncertainties right now in higher education. We have uh, the STEP exam for medical students. It's been transitioned to pass-fail or it will be transitioning. We've had students that are in their dedicated study time for this board exam. The, their seats were canceled because of this pandemic. We have all the uncertainties because of the pandemic. We have other uncertainties in higher education, such as SAT and ACT, their role. Um, so many things are changing for so many people. And then on top of that, we have issues uh, with racism and injustice across the country. Um, with all that uncertainty, I just wanted to focus on a couple of the promises uh, that we can find in God's Word in Philippians chapter 4. So if you'll join me. I'm reading the ESV version, Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm, thus in the Lord, my beloved. I wanted to pause right there a quick second and introduce uh, Philippians. So this is Paul writing to the church of Philippi. Uh, he's in prison right now, so he's going and enduring significant hardship, but hardship that he is rejoicing for because he has the ability to share the gospel with the prison guards. It's amazing his outlook on life. Um, so we have this, and in chapters 1 through 3, he succinctly uh, shares the gospel, and then he provides these examples of other people who are suffering and serving for Jesus. And he's, sum he's summarizing everything up in chapter 4. So starting again in verse 2, we have this division in the church of Philippi that he addresses. I entreat Yodia and I entreat Syntikia to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with the Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So I wanted to take a minute and just think about what this is. So Paul is seeing this divisiveness in the church, and I really felt with that because we're seeing divisiveness within the church right now and within our nation as a whole. And it's clear throughout the scripture that we're to unify and to help. So he calls the church. He says, my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life, come together and help unify this church. And that is absolutely what God is calling us to do. Continuing in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand and do not be anxious about anything. 
but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. I'm going to pause there again. I, I love what he's saying. Rejoice in the Lord always. And he doesn't just tell us to do that. He shows us what that looks like. He is in prison and he is rejoicing in the Lord right now. So while we're facing our exams, the uncertainty of, you know, what's going to happen with step two, what's going to happen in school, what's going to happen with the pandemic, uh, how, how is healthcare going to change to address these issues of racial, racial injustice? We're not sure how we're going to move forward, but what we can count on is that we should rejoice in these challenges and that the Lord will be with us. Do not be anxious about anything. In everything, we should give thanksgiving and we should let our requests be known to God. Um, I don't think we can ever be reminded enough that we should pray and have that open line of communication with the Lord. Continuing on uh, with verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. So that's another reminder of while we don't understand why things are happening the way it is, God does. And we should rejoice in that and be thankful and, and be thankful that we can have that peace and that understanding and knowing that someone is in control that does understand. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I know it's hard to find, you know, rejoice in this time because of so much stuff that's going on. But he's telling us we got to hang on to it. We should be thankful that, you know, we have two eyes to see. We can hear. We should rejoice in all things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I love how he finishes that section right there. He's saying, don't just listen to these words. Don't just go through the motions of what I've said. Don't just open this church. He's writing to the church of Philippi. Don't just be this church that does nothing and put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. So when you're feeling anxious about these things, when you're not sure what's going to happen or how you're going to do on this exam, remember that if we are practicing what Paul writes and what, the, what God has revealed to us, we will receive his peace. So with that, I just want to say a quick prayer uh, for all the CMBA chapters, for the schools, for, for everyone that's listening, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you for this word. I pray that you can open the eyes of our heart, Lord, that, that we can just soak in what you've said, what you've written here in Philippians, God, and uh, be with us through these uncertain times, God. Uh, give us that peace, Father, and give us the strength to follow through with your word, not just to listen to it and to study it, but to do what you've asked us to do, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I want to thank you, Zach, for opening up God's word to us and opening up your life as well. So thank you again. And thank you all for joining with us, taking the time, that, that strategic pause in the day and joining with us as we hear from God, his word, and come together as his people to pray. So thank you. We're going to continue to do so until the Lord says otherwise. And so, um, again, thank you for uh, setting that time aside and uh, and for putting your prayer requests down below. And if you haven't done so already, I do invite you to do just that. Put your prayer requests and we'll take those with us. And we pray for you and uh, we appreciate it and count it an honor and privilege to pray for you. So thank you. Well, I'm going to dismiss us with uh, the Lord's benediction and I'm going to post that right up here. It's Romans 15, 5 through 6, and uh, may this be God's blessing upon you as you leave here today. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, God bless, and have a wonderful day.